Today's show is brought to you by Imperial Yeast. You hear us gushing over Imperial Yeast all the time, and that's because their yeast performs for us in every batch that we brew. Imperial Yeast is adored by commercial breweries and home brewers alike. Their pitch right pouches are jam packed with over 200 billion fresh yeast cells, guaranteed to deliver flawless, fast fermentations every time. Imperial yeast strains are grown by a team of pro brewers and home brewers who live to help other brewers learn more and ferment better. Join any recipe receiving tier of our super duper homebrew club and get a free upgrade to premium Imperial yeast with every recipe kit that ships out to you. Learn more at homebrewhappyhour.com forward slash club and come brew with us. Entertaining shows with content that spreads information and sparks discourse throughout the community. This is the Pearl Media Network. It's Brew Day Live, and more to celebrate our 250th episode. This is Homebrew Happy Hour, episode 250. Hello and welcome to the Homebrew Happy Hour. This is the show where we supply the answers to your homebrewing questions and discuss all things related to craft beer. If you have a question you'd like us to discuss on a future episode, go to homebrewhappyhour.com and click on that submit a question link at the top of the page or now you can call or text them in by using 325-305-6107. I am your host, Joshua Steubing. Today I'm joined by the director of operations at cmbecker.com right over there, Mr. James Carlson, as well as the president and hey, resident chief keg washer of kegconnection.com right below me, Mr. Todd Burns. Gentlemen, it's episode 250. Yay. That's exciting, huh? <laughs> you're, and you're believe yeah. that was believable, too. That was super convincing. Like, yay. Yay. <laughs> We've been brewing all day. If you're in our Trub Club at homebrewhappyhour.com forward slash club, you could have joined us. We had links in our Patreon. Uh, you should have gotten it in your inbox. Anyone who subscribed to us through Patreon, you got it for sure. Sent through Patreon. And um, also on our secret super duper Facebook group, which is called Trub Club Now. I'm sorry, Todd. It's not super duper anything anymore. But we're actually also live streaming to that audience. So let's get it right this time, guys. Let's not mess up and flub because I don't want people to know that I actually do edit sometimes. No, I'm lying. I really don't. We actually usually just do a one take. I couldn't tell you. When is the last time y'all think we've done an episode and we didn't do a one take? It's been a long time. It's almost always because you say something that you're not supposed to say and I make you re I make you take it out right <laughs> yeah you, when we were doing the live stream before recording this episode I was I was just divulging our download numbers and stuff I know it's stuff you don't care about but I was thinking like oh cuz sometimes Todd gets after me if I d- divulge too much if I say like oh yeah well let me tell you what that does or this or that then, then after the fact you're like hey man you're an idiot get that out of the show but anyway <laughs> I'm no stranger to Todd Burns calling me an idiot. But anyway, we have a great, we have a normal episode. We have questions for you. We've got listener feedback and we're doing it live. So there are people in our live stream audience right now, uh, a good chunk of people. Gosh, we're almost coming up on three hours of streaming so far. Um, we Let's start off the, the small talk with that. That's what I have in my show notes. We are... I'll start it off because I like to talk and hear myself. My pop and I, who he'll be coming on in and out, he's doing most of the work because I have to do the podcast stuff. I had to run that. So he has to do most of the brewing. Uh, Normally, I'm way more involved in brewing, as everyone knows. But we're brewing, (laughs) Todd, don't roll your eyes. We're brewing a 10-gallon batch of Imperial Coffee Stout, which is a clone of of the Breakfast Stout from Founders, which is my top three. It it, it varies between number one, number two, number three of of all-time beer. Year. And we're pretty decently smooth brew day. I'll let him report differently because, again, he's doing most of the work. James, I'm going to kick it to you, my friend. What are you brewing mm-hmm. today? Uh, Dos Equis Amber clone. So it's it's a uh, Vienna lager, but it's we're we're trying to trying to hit the uh, Dos Equis Amber lager. And then, Ms. yeah, I've, I've actually brewed that before. It's an excellent beer. It's uh it's my wife's favorite beer, so you're going to be in her good, good graces, James. And I'm going to have about 19 gallons by the time I'm done. Dang. Wow. So, 
That's fantastic. Yeah, you are. You're going to be Liz's favorite. You know how hard I've worked to even be considered one of the favorites, and you just she doesn't really care for breakfast stout. I know she does. Just saying, you know, you you're the one who asked me to brew it. What do you? Th- you, you it was your idea. Yeah, for me, but I'm oh. not. I'm saying she's not going to be happy with you. That's not very really nice. Oh gosh, I, I, for the most part, I would say, and maybe it's the live stream. It's been pretty smooth on y'all's end. James had a tiny boil over, but it was like so minute. And and Todd, you probably yeah. had the smoothest brew day. You've been brewing since six thirty, so I don't know what happened between then and when we started streaming. I haven't. I didn't have any trouble at all. I was at temperature and ready to go. And Dad, so you're, you're now you're you're on. Issues. Would you say that our our brew day has been reasonably smooth? Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. Little, come come on in, Dad. We had a little bit too you much. Water in the uh, in the mash tun. So when we're we're pouring in the grains, you know, we had a little overflow. We but um, we, we're pushing the cooler brew to the mats. Like yeah. it is, it is filled. But we've we've done that before, and we had good results. So we have good beer. In hindsight, I, I think we're going to go at, at uh, one quart per pound of grains. We did we we did one and a quarter, mm-hmm. and that was our mistake. We should have done it one because we knew we were sparging anyway with. Yeah. Many, I didn't you know, consult yeah, James before. James gallons. would have said, "Do one." And yeah, I, I, we, we should have. He, that's what it I won't get. fit. <laughs> the mat, you know, <laughs> that's what I get for not talking to yeah. James. With that kind of grain bill and, and the fact that you're using a cooler, it, <laughs> yeah. it's you're not circulating anything, we, so it doesn't really. We tried to put ten and a half gallons of water <laughs> in. Uh, what is that? Eleven, glue hole, 11 twelve fit, tops. Eleven, and then, and then pour in thirty-four pounds of grain on top of that. The mm. displacement. Oh, no. <laughs> Got us in look, trouble. A look, little guys, bit. I'm not good at math or science. Uh, Todd can attest to that. It's been two years since we brewed uh, this recipe on the cooler brew. Yeah, Last correct. year we did it on the spike, the solo, the prototype solo. Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. Before before I get into some other stuff, Todd, why don't you introduce your guest? Yeah, come on, Dad. Uh, so Josh has his dad on. I have decided to have my dad on as well. Hey, Mr. So Burns. we've. We've uh, talked about dad before, all positive stuff, right? Yeah, yes, <laughs> only good things. Uh, only good always things. positive. So I thought that would be fun. So the first time I ever saw home brewing in my life was with dad. Uh, dad used to brew his own beer. And uh, what, what year do you think that was? Oh, gosh. It was maybe middle to early 60s. Wow. Wait um, wait a second. I don't think well, home brewing. <laughs> Well, I don't think Hobrain was legal back then. Yeah, I thought they legalized it in 74, and it became legal in Texas in 78. Maybe it was that late then. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely wasn't breaking the law. <laughs> Mr. Burns, you seem like a rule follower to me. That doesn't seem like you. <laughs> does he we've re- caught you on lo- We've no, caught you no, here. Does he, do, yeah, do, breaking the law, Dad. Does he breaking remember the, no. the first batch he brewed? You, Beg pardon. Do you remember what what was the first batch you brewed? What kind of beer was it? It was beer. Yeah, it was beer. You know, they had a blue ribbon malt, and they had it in a can, and it was a, a had sugar in it, mm-hmm. and it was in the grocery store. So whatever whatever came out from that, you didn't add anything else. I don't think. Yeah, it was just blue ribbon malt. Uh, when I the first time I ever brewed, it was just in a can. You know, we we brewed from cans before. Uh, doing experiments in the company too, but this was just something you bought in the grocery store, and then you—I think you just used uh, bread yeast, didn't you? Yes. I, uh, no, I think there actually was brewers yeast. A brewers yeast, okay, just yeah. a generic brewers yeast. Yes. And would you say it was a spectacular beer, or? Uh, it varied according to how much. Uh, <laughs> Unwanted bacteria you had in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way you varied the taste and the quality. And the- <laughs> I, I remember it being, um, he, he used to let me taste it, and I, I had tasted other beers, and it didn't taste like the other beers that I had tasted. You, you mentioned that you had some pretty, some batches had some questionable quality to them but I, I do remember that you brewed a really good batch one time right and then i believe my brother and his friends got into it and I drank it all could be yeah <laughs> could be <laughs> and pre-hop they but, still they still made pre-hopped canned at strat right in that a no, lot- I, I don't even know if this was this was it hopped or did you add hops 
No, I, I didn't add hops. Well, so it must have been pretty hot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have some. Yeah. Uh, remember the uh-huh. Mr. Beer? Yeah, was that what it was called? Uh-huh. Mr. Beer was pre hop. Yeah, uh, yeah, and it just came with a can on the size of a can of green beans or whatever, and right. you just dumped that in there and then added the water and yep. boiled it. And yep, yep. And it was, That's how it, I started. Yeah. Sanitize your. So it was. Uh, it was pretty. It was pretty rudimentary then, and you made wine as well. Uh, yes. Uh, you, we actually picked grapes on the ranch that were Mustang grapes, and made them from the the grapes that we picked. Yeah, I had a. PhD chemist friend that was either he had an off switch and an on switch and and he <laughs> turned his own switch on that day and I thought we'd make maybe five gallons and we made 30. Oh wow. My God. And he brewed it all in the closet of one of his daughters in his house. <laughs> and she complained bitterly that her clothes smell like brewing wine every time she went to school. I bet. I bet. Yeah, things uh, things have certainly changed a lot. Josh, you love to bring it up that uh, it's a good time to be in uh, to be a brewer. Right? It is. So. Oh, it's the best time to be a brewer. I mean, look at what y'all are brewing on. That's evidence enough. Y'all got y'all got commercial type equipment that you're making you know 15 gallon batches on. And uh, what's your what's your favorite beer that that we brew? Oh, the Colch. The Colch. Okay. Yeah. Well, Josh uh, would agree with you there. <laughs> yeah, it's my his brother. favorite beer. My brother. Um. I, I think well, well, Todd has a delicious Kolsch that is, I, I don't, how much would you say you've tested, Todd? Because it, I feel like you keep testing it every time we talk and you've had to at least had a gallon out of there. No, no, I've, I've tested it <laughs> just two times that I know of. Really? Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, it's, you know, you got to pour a little out because there's a lot of yeast that collects at this point in that, in that area. So you got to kind of pour a little out, maybe a couple of ounces, and then you can get a clear beer and kind of look at it. But it's not it's not clarified enough yet. It needs some more time for sure. Right, right. Well, hold on. Let me go over it. Let me. Uh, y'all can't see this on on y'all's end, but I'm switching mine over to the brew cam. We we have viewers at home can see our our brew cam or what the left what's left of our grains and our our boil that's going. I think did we just start boiling? Hey, and James, you're boiling. Our brew days are going well. Mm-hmm. I appreciate that. Um, so, real, also, Mr. Burns, are you or Todd? Have you had him brew with you since you started brewing again? Have y'all brewed together? Because I know you got brewing from him. Have y'all brewed together? We not really. You've you've come over and watched a little bit. Yeah, my consulting fee is too high for him <laughs> to afford. Yeah, Dad. Dad's a chemical engineer, and he. <laughs> He still charges the going consulting rate for a chemical engineer, so I, I can't afford that. Yeah, the family f- friends discount is retail plus thirty percent, or I forget what it is, fifty percent. Yeah, to have to deal with me, he definitely charges extra. So, <laughs> retail oh, and Dad, uh, that piece of hose you wanted, I have it for you. So, great. We happen to have that hose already, so you're in luck. Did, did you tell him? <laughs> did you tell him you broke another hydrometer? I mean, I don't. I don't want to throw you under the bus right now on the live show in front of your dad. But did, I don't know if you. Yeah, I just that. broke another hydrometer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I hope it wasn't that antique. No, no, I, I don't use the one you gave me because it's an antique. So. It uh, was in it, a cardboard box. No, I would definitely would not have brought it up if it was the antique. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to make you cry. Um, no, I, I think it would be fun. I think, you know, how y'all should do a brew day. Yeah. You know, I think my favorite part of brewing is having my dad do all the, I mean, brewing with my dad. Yeah. And yeah. Then, yeah. You know. My dad is not going to do all the work if we brew. That's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> you, um, Scott, does he, does he help you normally? Seriously? It, we, it, we joke a lot about it. Absolutely. He does. Of course I do. Absolutely. He does. You know what? In the okay. beginning, in the beginning, he, he was gone for cleanup. But it's that true. was for like the yeah. first for the first year. It was, and then, then we called me want to brew. I said, "No, I want to brew. I have to clean up afterwards." That's true. So, well, because my kids were being bad, and I used that yeah. as my excuse to get away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but no, he, yeah, he's so, much more so than 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 the first year. Yeah, yeah, of course he does it right now. Good. We 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 kind of threw him under the bus a while back. You may and we we basically had him brew on the brow tag system, and we absolutely no refused to help him. Yeah. And and. uh 
the hardest part of all was to keep James from helping him because James really wants to help at all right. times. So. You got, you, yeah. But you got mad at James when he was trying to help me from scalding my hand. You were like, no, don't let, let him learn. Shut up. Part, it's part of the pro- scalding is part of the process. You know, you have to learn. J- yeah. James was gritting his teeth telling me, Todd, I think he's burning himself. <laughs> I did. He was holding yeah. his hand. Under the scalding water, <laughs> we looking at it like that really hurts, you know. And James, I think James was thinking about pulling it out of the scalding water at some point. He was, <laughs> my, but my this hand, my hands are so arthritic from judo, and they're just calloused over that I just didn't feel it. It, it was it's wild. My extremities are just numb. It's probably not a good thing. I should go see someone about it. But anyway, uh, yeah. Mr. Burns, I'm I'm happy to see you on there. Are you? Uh, he, I know he said the Kolsch or whatever. H- have you had my breakfast out yet? Or, I don't know if you're looking forward to, to the breakfast out. I don't know if you if you even drink the breakfast out. Yeah, you you probably had it. We we had it on tap like two years ago. It, it was a real it's a real dark, flavorful beer. You'll you'll like it. Dad loves beers like that, but he doesn't want a lot of it. You know, no, like like yeah. anybody, I like guess. Anybody. He, yeah. he likes to have a you know maybe a. Eight ounce glass of it, and then maybe switch over to something lighter. That's how we are over here. I mean, that's why we still have what a gallon and a half left of last year's batch. I, I don't know, not it even. Is, no, we have half there. a gallon. But just eight ounces is perfect pour. And enjoy it. You know, have have some of a cigar with it, and then move on to another style. We like so, that a lot. Scott. Scott, what is your favorite beer? I don't even know. Lone Star. Yeah, I was. I wasn't going to say that because then you'd make fun of me. <laughs> Uh, it, it's like drinking water in the summer, you know, Lone Star. It really is. You can drink, you know, uh, it's kind of like drinking water. But, or Coles. Uh, uh, right. Miller, Miller High Life. Uh, I like a Miller High Life. He likes Shiner Bach. I like Shiner Bach. But um, a lot of the beers that, that uh, Josh brings over and turns me on to are good. Uh, my neighbor, or not my neighbor, a good friend came by a couple weeks ago, brought some Yingling, and I hadn't had Yingling uh, I don't know if ever. I think I had once. But. That's a very good uh, multi uh, pilsner. Yeah, it was or good. lager. Pardon me. Yeah, it is. Dad, Dad had a Dad had a Yingling last night, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. So when I it ne- came over. I never drank oh. IPA until. Well, I, I take that we back. I, I had several IPAs and I hated them. I was I was like James. I couldn't stand them at all. The first IPA that we brewed, I loved. And probably because I brewed it yeah. and it came out tasting really good. And now with IPA, I have to have a cigar. I cannot drink an IPA. He likes IPAs with cigars. I'm, I'm a, an ex-smoker, cigarette smoker. I quit uh, 20 years ago. but um, Cigarettes. Yeah. yeah. And I, I smoke a cigar occasionally. But, w- you know, with a breakfast out. I, I really like a cigar with a breakfast out. I like a cigar with an IPA. If I'm drinking my Lone Star, I don't have to have any. I can drink. It's like drinking water. Yeah, but here's a, uh, you could say he likes a cigar with beer. I mean, who? <laughs> that, that's true. <laughs> At the end of that's the day, true. it's just an enjoyable activity yeah. to drink beer. But I can't drink a heavy IPA without a beer. Hey, before I forget this, Mark in the chat, because I did tell the people we are live streaming. Uh, James, he's asking on your system, are you boiling off at all, or are you going to have your kettle filled to the max? I'm going to have to add, because I'm going to, I'm going <laughs> to, my efficiency went way up. So I'm going to I'm going to actually add at the end of the boil because right now I'm at 17 under 17 and a half gallons. I'm going to try to get about 19 out of the batch. I have more than enough room in the fermenter for it. Damn. Yeah, that, that's exactly what I did. I don't know if you all noticed when I was because everybody was kind of talking, but I, I actually collected RO water and put it in and added uh, when I was right, right at the end or actually when I was done with the boil. I sanitized the, the vessel I was using and did that. And it, it seems I've done that quite a bit. It seems like it works really well. I've never had any problems with an infection or anything like that. Yeah. And, and you so. didn't have to, this brew day today, you didn't have to adjust anything, did you? Like you didn't have to add water or boil down or anything. You hit your numbers pretty good. No, that's what I just said. I, I, I put the RO water in. At the oh, very you did end. put the RO, my bad. I was kind of listening. And, and brought it up to 17 and a half gallons, I believe. We yeah. had to add, or two? Uh, or one and a half? From the mash, we added two gallons yeah. after the, yeah. After sparging. Yeah, 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 after yeah. sparging. But uh, I, had, I planned on doing that from the very beginning because huh. you know, my kettle was so full that I, I got down to the point where I didn't have very, a lot of sugar left. And I was at 18 gallons, and I said, "Well, I'm gonna." I checked it to see what it, the sugar level was on the, what was still coming out. Sure. 
And I said, you know, I'm just going to cut it off and add water because I'm already higher than I need to be. So it, it worked well. I, I think a lot, I do that a lot of times. I, I, it just depends on kind of what the sugar level is of what I'm still getting out as I, as I'm going. So, right. And James working over there. We, we have started boiling, right? You said, oh, yeah, we started, we started boiling timer. 15 minutes ago. So okay. Yo, that's what I, yeah, that's what I marked down on my timer. So, I'm, so tell me this Todd. frequently we, uh, I don't think it's going to happen this time, but we're after boil is done. We don't have enough and we've added ice cold water. I mean, it's bottled water, you know, uh, but I've kept in a fridge and we've we've added that straight to the. Um, we don't do it every time, but you're talking about no, no. you're talking about doing the chilling. To help, yeah, to help cool down, but also because we were short on volume. Like I said, we, you know, like out of this, we want to get um, we're, we're trying to get you know two five gallon. Well, so the start of our boil was thirteen. Mm-hmm. We're trying to get five and a half mm-hmm. uh, per okay per egg, or five and a quarter because the trub. So per 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 five fermenter, we want five and a quarter gallons. We started our boil at at thirteen. Needing eleven, needing uh, eleven and a half. Eleven and a half, yeah. So I showed Todd. I, I gave you all the numbers last night, Todd. You said, yeah, well, uh, I think that's fine. I mean, I I do it. Like I said, I do it frequently. I think using cold cold water it helps you bring your temperature down. The only reason I didn't use cold water is I didn't have the foresight to do that. <laughs> what I should have done is taken two or three or four gallons or whatever I needed and put it in the fridge overnight and then put it in and help cool down a little faster than what I did. Prior so. proper planning prevents poor performance piss, poor performance piss, piss thank poor. you dad that's <laughs> that's an original saying from my father I, I have heard it a million times and now josh gets to hear it all the time that's, that's great yeah. that's right that's right thank you mr burns and you thought he wasn't listening all those years right? yeah see yeah gotcha yeah. all right i we do have a show i'm gonna start it off we have feedback from our buddy troy make sure y'all can hear it uh, he left it at our hotline at 325-305-6107. And Troy said, oh, no, pardon me. This isn't from Troy. Hey, guys, I have a quick uh, listen to your feedback regarding uh, a couple of episodes ago about um, get hot, getting stuck in uh, uh, the disconnects. Uh, so I ran into the same issue myself, a couple of the brews, and what um, one way that I figured out uh, uh, to work best um is when uh when i rack uh the beer into the keg um i i siphon um out of the carboy and i add a hot bag to either the bottom side going into the carboy or the tube um on the siphon and that seems to help catch any uh residue or uh hop um hop particles that uh pre- and prevent it from going inside the keg uh like i said um I, I siphon, and that seems to work perfect for the past 10 brews um, as far as uh, other ways. This is so funny. I, I added the wrong. That, that was from last week. Yeah, I know. I was like, I have heard that That's before. so funny. That's from last week. <laughs> On another episode. It is. And that's hilarious. Where I got to find. I, now I have to find the, the, the audio because I was like, wait a second. Wait a second. That was from last week. Here we go. We're gonna get uh, we're gonna get the right one on. It's it's this right here, Joshua. What are you doing? All right. Let me let me add it on here. In the meantime, let us. Um, I'm sure. I mean, you're gonna probably edit that out, right? Of course I will. Yeah, live. Yeah. <laughs> of course I will. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, the live stream gets to see. Yeah, Daniel. It's Daniel's <laughs> fault down there because he said I want to watch it live for the bloopers. You jerk, Daniel. All right. Here we go. This is our live feedback was for this week is from our buddy Fred. He's bl- uh, blind brew guy on Instagram. He was. We we're talking about favorite guests or whatever. And we have stuff uh, questions coming up. Fred's one of my favorite people on Instagram. So here is this week's listener feedback. Hey, Joshua and Todd and James, if you happen to be listening, this is Fred, the Blind Brew Guy, and I was calling in with some feedback for episode 241, where you talk about using a long dip tube on the gas post of a corny cake. Uh, The only thing I would add is if you do that, make sure you have a functioning check valve somewhere on your gas distribution system. Otherwise, if your CO2 tank runs dry, you could feed beer back through the dip tube, through the gas line, into your regulator, and into the CO2 tank. I won't elaborate on why I know this can happen, but it definitely can happen. 
Um, <laughs> as a bonus, I will add a brew day mistake. I was brewing a batch of your true to style all fear a while back. Uh, the brew day went great and I came to pitch the pack of, uh, Imperial Kaiser yeast. Uh, the only problem is that it had fallen behind one of my kegs in the keg rater and was wedged up against the cooling plate and it froze solid. Uh, I know you're not supposed oh, no. to freeze yeast, but I didn't have a lot of other, other options, so I pitched the frozen cake of yeast. Uh, the fermentation went fine. The beer tasted great. Wow. Everything worked out uh, perfect in the end. So I don't know if that's because imperial yeast is that good, but uh, anyway, it, it worked. So uh, you guys keep up the good work, and we'll maybe talk to you later. Cheers. Thank you, Fred. Now, now that I had the right, yeah, I'm not, you're right, Todd. I'm not going to edit out the last mistake. I just did it because we're, we're recording a day late anyways now to publish it. But Fred came through with this week's listener feedback. We appreciate yeah, you, Fred. And, that then, was and good. I like how we have so many people who, who will write in or, or call in with tips, but, but it's not because of learned experience. It's not like he let that happen to his CO2 tank. I mean, it's just common knowledge that he's just passing on to us. It's not that he ruined, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Check yeah, valves. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Check, well, check valves are a wonderful thing. Check valves. So <laughs> all of the systems from Keg Connection, if, when you buy a system, we normally have a check valve on the regulator, and we also have check valves on the, on the air manifolds as well. So we, so if you've got a, a system where you, where you're going from a regulator to an air manifold, you actually have double check valves. Uh, but there's always a check valve, no matter what type of system you have. So that's, it, it is very important. And there are a lot of, I've seen a lot of companies selling air manifolds and regulators without check valves. And I, I think it's a, it's, it's a bad idea. So it's dangerous. You're flirting with disaster when you're using the, uh unchecked valve line. and even you know i, I have gotten uh, uh tap right regulators back or other or chud now you know the one that we used to sell before they went out of business that where somebody didn't have a check valve yeah you know they removed it or did their own or wh whatever and had them flooded with beer and we had to you know clean everything out it's not fun so definitely use a check valve it's not fun and i know james you can attest from cm becker you sell oh. a lot of check oh, yeah. valve disconnects <laughs> for and I also want to apologize. I haven't had any anything to eat all morning, and we've been on live for what almost four hours yeah. now. Yeah, no, you're good. So I'm trying to trying to get something down my stomach because I'm kind of hungry. But Not yes, I agree. Check valves are awesome. They're a great thing to have. I have actually flooded a regulator doing that, and uh, it's not fun to clean up. You have flooded one. Oh Did, yeah. Was it repairable? <laughs> Like, I mean, you, you like, uh, when immediately when it happened, I took it all apart, washed it, put it back together and it worked fine. So, okay. Cause I know you and Todd and not throw, not, not, I don't like sucking up to Todd, especially with his dad around, but Todd knows like regular, like if I have a regular question, it's always to Todd. He, he, I remember Todd, you yeah. do more stringent testing than the manufacturers were doing at one point, And you were sending them like your tips on video. He's so obnoxious. He had his camera. He goes, okay, what I'm going to do here that you should be doing. <laughs> like showing them tips to send to them. <laughs> it was fit. But, but, but you did get it resolved. I mean, that it worked, mm -hmm. you know, Todd, Todd knows how yeah. to be the squeaky wheel or whatever the saying is. But thank you, Fred, so much for submitting that question. We do have three questions for this week's show, guys. So let's get it going. The first question was a text message from our buddy Mike, who used our hotline at 325-305-6107. Mike wrote, Q's for 250. Favorite episode? Favorite guest? Great job, fellas, on 250 podcasts. It is crazy that it's been 250, and James has been with us for 200 or for yeah for 200 of them technically 202 wow. of them um that's my favorite episode james was the first one you were on i remember it like it was yesterday. Clay? Now, <laughs> i do yeah play if you're still in the chat we did have fun that time because we got we got pretty toasted and we're trying a bunch of different beers in the old front entry of the office i actually did have a great yep. time on that episode but i think my favorite yeah. Oh, no. His first choice was favorite episode. What, this is, goes line in line. We talked about it on the live stream for the, Strub Club, uh, for the Trub Club earlier. Every episode we have Horace Stormbush on is going to be my favorite episode. I, I do yeah. believe. The guy is such a wealth of knowledge, and he's really fun to talk to, especially when he knows he's not being recorded. He becomes even more fun. So, <laughs> Jay, uh, you know, James, I'll let you eat. Todd, I, I you think Horst, no, no, go ahead. I, I think Horst was, that was a great episode, and 
no disrespect, but where you had to shave your beard on the episode <laughs> is probably oh, forgot about my that. that. That was episode 100, I think. You did that online. On, yeah, yeah. We, I did. A you lost a live. bet. What was the bet? Mm, I don't remember, but I lost it. I remember that. And and yeah, yeah I, sh- and I shaved shave on the, yeah. I've never even seen I, you with that. I don't beard. think Didn't I saw it that episode. Your child? It did. It scared my youngest at the time, which was Esther. Yeah, it scared her. No, no, it couldn't have been Esther because episode 100 couldn't have been more than four years ago. So uh, beats me. Yeah, it might have been. No, it was probably young Hannah. But yeah, I definitely scared my children. My wife didn't like it, which is funny because she always gripes about the beard. And then when the beard is gone, she, I'm starting to think women just gripe or my wife. Pardon me. Sorry. Some Sometimes I <laughs> overgeneralize. But. Yeah, she, uh, we would, yeah. Oh, Clay is in the chat, James. He says, remind me to bring Todd more sour beers. I remember you bringing one that night and it was mm. God awful. And I remember, I think that I, was the first time I've ever had one. Well, I think I humored you. I, I was like, oh, that's not the worst I've ever had. And I mean, that's probably true, but it was still terrible. It was still a bad beer. Um, t- James, what about you for favorite episode or favorite guest or all of the above? Well, you know, I had, we had talked about this earlier and I was talking about Horst. And that was a good episode, but I actually forgot about the very first one we did with Clay and I. That I, I would have. To, I'm thinking I'm going to change my opinion and say that was the most fun because we got to taste beers I'd never had before. Uh, Clay and I were pretty active in brewing at that time. He still lived in Comanche, so we we spent a lot of time together and got to kind of meet you. And that was probably my favorite episode. It was fun. And do y'all remember? I actually did edit this out. We <laughs> remember when two two people who worked at the company at the time, I don't know what they were doing there. I think maybe they knew we were recording, but they came in mm-hmm. like <laughs> they just barged in and they had dates. I yeah, think they, they just walked right in. I yeah. think they were just trying to show off that they had dates. Was they, this audio only or was <laughs> it was audio? It was the days of audio only. Okay. And I'm pretty sure I edited that part out because they just walked in like, hey, what are y'all doing in here? <laughs> like, we're recording, you jerks. What are y'all doing? Oh, just have some dates on our art. Like, oh, okay. You paid these ladies. That's not cool. But yeah, that was that was a, t- a really fun episode. I think all, any of the live streams we do are also some of my favorite, just because of how much fun. Usually we do live streams all in person. I like this this one because I like how much beer we're yielding. So doing it remotely <laughs> is working out for us specifically for yeah. the, the party. Yeah. I think. Oh, we all brewed ten gallons, right? Smell- I'm sorry. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. We're brewing 10. That's correct. Okay. I, I, I still think I was going to say 45. I still think we're going to get 45 gallons because we, we made up, we made up for what you were lacking here. We, we brewed, uh, Got it. three and a half yeah. bat. Uh, yeah. We, we brewed, uh, three and a half batches. If you do a five gallon, Got, batch, we got to so. get a brow tag over here. Cause we're, well, I mean, he still thinks we're going to get the, he wants to do a, a good brew day on the solo. Prototype. I'm going to, no, we're not. I'm going to, no, we're not. I've got to buy a pump and I'm going to, no, we're not. Is your name maybe you, uh, I think what you should do uh, to get a good brew on the solo is maybe eliminate the weak link in the system. I, I'm thinking I'll probably have to do it by myself, Todd. I, I yeah. not in reference <laughs> to what you're saying at all, but, <laughs> um, I wasn't listening. What are you referring to? That's not very nice at all. To, um, I think to wrap up this first question, because we're doing this episode, not to just ride me. Um, I am happy every week we get to do an episode. And now that's not the cop out answer. It's just this is absolutely my favorite thing to do for for what we do. Believe it or not, some people will write in and ask me, "What do you do for Todd?" And my first answer is always like. Who are you? You my mother? Like uh, none of your business. He doesn't even know what I do for him. Take it easy. But my second, <laughs> well, my second part to it is like the 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 podcast is what would you say, Todd? Fifteen percent, twenty percent of what I do for you, R- realistically. Um, it, it's not a, uh, it's not the bigger chunk. That's for sure. And no, no. I, I would, hope I hope it's not twenty percent. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're right. Uh, I, I'm bad at math. We've established I'm bad at math. But I just mean, I mean you only do it an hour a week. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, wait, how many hours? Good gig. Wait, how many hour weeks? You only you? work five hours a whole every week. So, anyways, oh that'll God. do it for this episode of the. No. <laughs> James took off. All right, uh, Mike. Though, thank you so much for submitting that question. We did get. If I didn't get to your question in the chat or that you sent me, Mike's was basically what summed up a ton of it. Uh, a lot of people, and I like doing those kinds of recap questions for the these milestone episodes because 250. We we started doing the show in 2015 or 2014 and we had a nine to 11 month period where we weren't doing them at all 
and then we pick back up. So we've been doing the show for a while. 250 is a big number. I remember Todd, uh, friends of ours who do the Drips and Drafts podcast where they did it over at Keg Outlet, Brendan and Carrie. We recently, didn't they hit you up? Like, dude, you've done, it was like at the time, 245 episodes? Are you serious? Like, it's not common. Yeah, yeah. It, but anyway, so moving on, uh, I'll, you know, this next question doesn't need James, but he might have headphones on and he can hear us when he gets back. Uh, Mike, now's a great time to remind you and anyone listening, if and when we take a question on a future episode, we do give you a $25 gift card to kegconnection.com. Question number two came from our buddy Paul M., who used the submission form at homebrewhappyhour.com. Paul wrote, can I use nitrogen to dispense other beer styles that are not stouts? My new setup is one tap, and that tap is an inner tap nitro faucet. If I want to tap a different style of beer keg, do I need to use CO2 and a different tap too? Cool show. I just found it. Yeah, we know you just found it because you're not using a CM Becker V3N. Um, Todd. Yeah. Oh, damn, you're bad, James. Uh, what would you say? Oh, I had to get your hops. No worries. Uh, you poured in our hops, right? Uh, the the sixty minutes yeah. okay, but I'm, I'm about to go and grind uh, coffee grounds. They have okay, to go in the flame, the flame out, out okay. even though it's still say we got thirty time. minutes. Yeah, yeah. Um, what would y'all say for using nitrogen for other beers? I, I'll start by saying yeah. um, Old Speckled Hen, which is an English bitter or an English mild, mm -hmm. is my favorite non stout to drink on nitro it is so smooth the the cans use i guess the same widget that guinness has or something similar and they're they're delicious boddington's uses the same and thing. boddington's honey ale is another one i was to bring up too uk seems to utilize the nitro for a lot of non-stouts uh todd would you say it, he'd be okay dispensing a pale ale or or a kolsch or anything else or would you say no you need to have separate systems for each style well, no, I mean, there's a, if you want to dispense it as a stout, you certainly could, you know, just use the same process as you're using. Uh, I've, I've been to many brew pubs where they have two different, they have the same beer, one on CO2 and one on stout. So you can kind of see the difference in it. And rarely are those, a, uh, are those a stout? There's some other style of beer. And there. when you say on stout, they're saying, you know, try this on CO2 and try this on uh, nitro, uh, on nitrogen. And you, you know, you get one of each and try them side by side. I, th I think it's a lot of fun to, to do that. Any beer can be served that way. If, it, it, but it, it will definitely change the taste. And, the, you know, you know, you don't have as much, it still has CO2, but you don't have as much CO2. So less carbonic acid and, uh, yeah, you know, just a different taste. So. Well, that's what I was, I'll, I'll throw it to you, James. Um, mm -hmm. We, I, as far as I know, nobody in the world is using ni like pure nitrogen. When they were talking about nitro, we're talking about beer gas, which is a big mix yeah. of nitro and CO2, right? So there shouldn't be an issue like Todd's saying. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Beer gas is used if you've got long draw systems where you don't want to overcarbonate the beer, but um if you want, I would, I would, I would do an ale, an English ale, and serve it on nitro. Absolutely, yep. Well, do you see any benefit of removing the diffuser? Because like the V3N, and I know the inner tap. I, I believe Captain well, sells them, but or used to D the diffuser that is removable. Is it worth taking that out, or because you still want it broken up if you're using that? Well, you you would remove. The diffuser, if you were serving it on CO2, not nitrogen. Oh, gotcha. Okay. okay. You yeah. only, oh, if you want to use that. So, yes. Okay. So, uh, Paul, here's a good point that, yeah, I was jumping steps and not giving context. You can use that V3N for all your stouts or anything you're dispensing with nitrogen. And you could use it as well if you ever switch to CO2 to be your dispensing gas and you would just remove that diffuser and boom, now you've got a, a functioning faucet with, with that isn't going to be. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's just a standard faucet at that point. It's, the, yep. it's really no different. The diffuser is the only thing that makes it different. Yeah, in fact, we offer one that, that you can take. Everything's in the nozzle. You can take the nozzle off. It unscrews. You can pull the, the diffuser and there's a little, little alignment piece behind the diffuser you pop those out and it works like a regular forward ceiling faucet it's pretty cool yeah absolutely and and obviously i'm pushing the v3n uh with some bias we do have mr carlson the 
chief, uh, the director of operations at CMBector.com on the show. But it really is. I, I love the versatility of the faucet. But also, it, it, the the animated video we did, I think, is my favorite part of that faucet. But yeah, Paul, cool. I, yeah. It, to wrap up your, your question, Paul, you, you can use your current system exactly how it is. And let us know, you know, write in since you're new to the show and you've already got a $25, one $25 gift card. Uh, write in and let us know how what style you did and how it turned out. Because I think you'll be pleasantly surprised with how nitro will enhance or what it changes uh, to me it's specifically usually mouthfeel creaminess but like old todd usually has old speckled hen a, a you know a quarter of the year and i usually drink most of it sorry mr burns i don't think you have any I in I, just, I think i just bought some two days ago when i was coming back from dallas yeah buddy so you're in luck next time you come but it's not nitrogenated it's just uh standard it's co2 yeah oh, okay and, um, and the one that I have, I mean, I, I mean, I apologize that my brewing assistant is sleeping during the podcast. But he's yeah, look at him over there. My dad, I think, I told him, I sit, I'm sicking my dad over on the neighbor to go, why are you mowing right now? We're, we're outside. <laughs> if, you're, if you're audio only, I apologize. We're outside. And we, have, we got the propane you can hear. And like I said, with the neighbors are mowing. But Clay, hey, before we wrap up this question, because it's relevant, Clay in the chat asked, are there any other gases besides CO2 or nitrogen that could be used for beer? Um, and he's saying AR. Is that argon? What is AR? You're the argon. Uh, argon? I mean, yeah, it's an, Dad, it's a, an inert gas it's is what you mean. Inert. Totally inert gas. Yeah, and like Turn the mic on him. Helium, that'd be fun. We should do a helium. Yeah, there was so speaking. There, so go ahead. No, I, I mean I've never tried argon. I don't know what it would what it would do. I mean it's I've used it with to push wine before because it doesn't impart any flavor at all. And it's very neutral and um, I don't know, but helium. Would, so would you talk funny if you? If you had helium in the beer, turn the mic Maybe on them. Oh, that might, yeah. <laughs> how much beer you'd had. <laughs> <laughs> well, also, too, isn't helium terribly expensive? It, it probably is. I think I, for the amount we'd need, I think it's probably. They fill, they fill balloons with it, you know, so it's not that expensive. Oh, good point. You're right. And it's also, correct me if I'm, I always heard helium is a gas that we have a finite amount of. Like when we're out of helium, we're out of helium. There is no like regenerating helium. Is that true, or is that some pseudoscience uh, from Alex Jones? Because I listen to Infowars too much, which I don't. I'm just joking, <laughs> Mom. It, it, it's mostly true. Okay, I story it's of my life. That, that's the name of my memoir, Mister Burns. Mostly true. That's uh, I'm <laughs> I live in that great. Yeah, if I remember you actually talking about that before, where. You're like, I can't believe they fill balloons with helium because it's it, it's so limited. Yeah, it's it, it's a unique gas. You know, it has unique properties, very low molecular weight and totally inert. And uh, it has much better use, higher uses than filling balloons. <laughs> yeah, like beer. We should do a beer with no, it. Like MRI machines, I believe, right? It was, it, <laughs> didn't, didn't helium used in the invention of the MRI, I, I think? I don't uh, know. Probably the Kool-Aid. Oh, cool. Okay. See, look, I make up stuff all the time. We're no strangers to that. Um, but anyway, Clay, that's a great add on to that question. Yeah. I think, you know, as long as we have CO2, which during the beginning of lockdowns and stuff last year, there was a shortage and I was legitimately getting worried like, oh my gosh, how is this going to affect our industry? And thankfully we didn't see a huge bike and unavailability right todd i'd say we we i mean we, we yeah no was, we, did, we never had an issue uh, with finding other things where we are yeah correct exactly so anyways paul thank you so much for submitting the question i've got one last question before we then have some wrapping up stuff um and this one is the voicemail from troy that now this this one really cracks me up because you <laughs> you gave us a printout of the question <laughs> And I, I can't understand it at all I, from the printout. I told, must have, Google must have translated it. I told it, you huh? Google translation or Google transcript from voicemails is garbage. It, you'd think that they'd get better because they're always listening to us. Like I could tell the Google right now something and I'll get advertisements for that for the rest of the week. But anyway, uh, yeah, you, it's hard to, to, to tell from the transcript. But when I play it right now, this is from our buddy Troy in Mississippi, leaving us our final question for this week's show. Hey, Joshua, Todd, and James. Got a quick question for you about a 
uh, four-way manifold, I guess is what we would call it. Or um, so I got the I got a keyser at the house with four taps on it, and um, for the longest time I've just had three three kegs going for three taps. Uh, I know it's sacrilegious to say I got a four-tap keyser and only had three taps going, but uh, so I finally got around to uh, kegging the brown ale. Went to hook up the gas to it, and uh, well, nothing. Um, started looking at it, and I got no no flow through that fourth valve uh, on that on that manifold. So just trying to figure out what I need to do um, before uh, probably get online and look. But just wanted to see if you guys had any input as to what may be causing the other three uh, valves work fine, carving up the beer and serving the beer fine on those. But that fourth one, just for whatever reason. I get uh, no flow through that. So uh, just want to get your opinion on it. Thanks, guys. Oh, by the way, I don't think I said this. This is Troy over in Mississippi again. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thank you, Troy, for submitting the question. James, do you feel comfortable with me throwing this to Todd? He's usually the manifold. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> Todd, what do you think? Um, I would I would have to get if I, if I was going to guess on this, my, my first suspicion would be a stuck check valve. Yep. I've seen that before on a valve where they – the check valve itself is stuck. Sometimes you can uh, turn the pressure up quite a bit and get it to once it, sometimes when they unstick, they stay unstick, unstuck. Um, <laughs> that, so that may be it. <laughs> unstick, unstick. Uh, so that may be it, but it could, be, you know, I, I would always take it off of the disconnect and open it and make sure that it's not flowing otherwise and, and, you know, do some other due diligence, but if, if it is that and it's stuck and you cannot get it unstuck, uh, you know, you, you can take the front of it off and on a lot of them, you can actually take the front off and pull out the mechanism, look at it, put it back together, put it back on. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you bought it from us, call us, we'll send you another valve. It's, it may be a bad valve. We, we actually test them all. We do. Uh, we similar. always turn them on and make sure they're flowing. So, I, I, but I, what I've had happen before, we had a whole batch of them, five thousand of them one time that would do this constantly, and we ended up having to rebuild every single one of them by hand. And it, what it was doing was there was a little ball in there and, and a spring, and the and there were, the parts weren't good, and they were flailing around and then boom it would stick on that spring and it get wedged and stop so we actually put what's called a duck bill valve in instead on those to fix them uh they both of those systems are using a check valve both a, a duck bill valve and a, a and a ball in the spring so anyway just for we were you know i would just replace it if yeah if you can't get it to work from some simple tests, well, Jimmy in the chat's asking, could it be a backwards check valve? And I thought that too. That sometimes, sometimes it can be improperly installed, right? And in, in the actual inside the check valve, well, it's not likely, but yeah, I've, I've actually had that happen as well. But it would, it wouldn't necessarily, it wouldn't be on the air distributor on those valves coming out because of the way that check valve is. You can't screw it. You can't turn it around and screw it in because it's right. a. It's a male flared on one side. But what I have had happen, this happened very recently, actually. Customer had a whole system, very upset. He said, I can't get it to work. There's something wrong with it. And he worked and worked and worked on it. And we, we were on the phone for quite a while and went back and forth. And I finally, I said, look, just box it up, send it to me, and I'll take a look at it. I get a text about 10 minutes later, and he said, I had put a little... It, not not on the air distributor, but uh, in line before it got to the air distributor, I had put a check valve on, and the check valve that I put on, I, I put on upside down. So it, it was, the check valve was working fine. It was doing exactly what it was supposed to do. Yeah. It was stopping the flow in air in that direction. So, yeah, that, that could obviously uh, be an issue in some systems, but uh, not, not necessarily with an, uh, in a uh, – air distributor with one of those valves and knowing you james if it was if it was you and your setup you'd probably disassemble it and reassemble i mean you would you'd try to resolve it that way right through disassembly and process of elimination yeah i would i would look at the valve first like todd you know it's 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 possible it's a check valve i also have had you know over the 
years I've had gate valve handles stripped in the center mm -hmm. and it's actually the handles moving, but it's not moving the valve in the center, but you can tell because it'll be a lot looser feel, but it's probably check valve. Yeah. We'll go over there. Sorry. I was trying to show we got hops adding in. Y'all can't see it on y'all's end, but we've got the boil cam going. And I uh, for our fifteen. Oh, no, so mark. that's on the that that's on the podcast. We just can't see. It. Correct. Yeah, I can't. I haven't figured out how to use Zoom with the open broadcast software and have it all coming together. But I was able to overlay it so they can see. We, we have. Good. You're doing the breakfast stuff. Lorena is just joined us in chat. She goes, "I didn't realize you were doing this. Darn it! Missed the whole thing. You missed it on purpose. We know, Lorena. We know, Lorena. We're 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 very excited about your visit. So." uh we're glad that you joined. You know, Lorena's coming to visit. She's going to be here in the barn. We're going to clean it up for you, though. We brewed today, so it's a bit of a mess today. But, uh, yeah, we're, we're excited about you and Bob coming for a visit. Yeah, I am super excited. It is funny because she told me the dates, and I said, oh, I know. Todd told me. He said I had to be there. She goes, well, I thought you'd want to be there. I didn't know you had to be. <laughs> so I'm already, on, I'm already on thin ice with Lorena. And, uh but I, James, you'll, get, you'll like this. Her her husband Bob wants to come, and he said, "I want to meet Josh." It, it was kind of like that scene when uh, Jim's roommate wants to meet Dwight because he doesn't think he's real. Mm -hmm. That's how she presented it to me. <laughs> like Bob doesn't think <laughs> Bob doesn't think you're real. So no, she's in the chat. And she just said, uh, "Not as excited as we are." I think it looks great. Uh, need the dog for sure. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. That's gonna be in early December. We are obviously gonna have to do a, a show with her then, right? I mean, uh, is that that's probably the most obvious thing? Oh, that, I, I've already told her <laughs> that we were. She was pretty much stuck here and was gonna do a show. She didn't really have any choice. So, and are, are uh, we yeah. are we brewing too, or, or or is that asking too much? I don't I don't know if we'll have time. If okay. if, if she would like to brew, that, I think that would be a blast. We'll. Uh, we'll we'll see what what they want to do. I know they want to try to do some hunting and yeah, and relaxing, and maybe we might have a beer or two, <laughs> two hundred. <laughs> Lorena, I'm great with the gun, Lorena. You're gonna Ted, you're gonna have to ha come and have a beer with us. They're good, very good people, and she's an amazing developer of recipes and oh, yeah. a brewer, and she can ferment anything. Anything. Yeah. You, Think of something you want fermented and then she can ferment it for you. I okay. promise you. <laughs> There's an episode of Portlandia. We could pickle that. That's what makes me think of Lorena. I can ferment that. I can ferment that. Yeah. I can ferment that. That's Lorena. So she said we're gonna have a couple, two, three beers at least. Yes, yeah, yeah. Who's counting? I'm bad at math. But anyways, um, <laughs> I appreciate uh, to wrap all this up because we are basically out of time and that was out of questions. Thank you, Troy, so much for submitting the voicemail. Y'all don't understand. And I'm not even saying this to be funny. Todd and I, we all, I think, agree. We love the voicemail feedback. The more that gets submitted, mm -hmm. the more likely we're going to take it. Just, I think it's hard for Todd to read without his glasses on. So if we can just hear it. No. It makes it a lot easier on everybody, but no, we also, I like well, that. Kind yeah. Of I mean, I, I, it's, it's really funny because that last question, uh, I started reading it, as I mentioned, and it's, uh, it says, <laughs> I just had three cakes going for free taps. <laughs> I know it sucks. And the ferry put forward type keezer. <laughs> yeah. <That's>, uh, <laughs> yeah. I was really having a hard time understanding that question. So that's hilarious, but yeah, you know, Hey, we have a bonus question real quick. James, can you hear me? I want to get this in because sure. Jimmy just snuck it in. Hey, I'd like to know about if there may be issues with cold crashing early when gravity is at the recipe expected spot, but it's still bubbling away. Like, is he going to get – oh, and he said, and the diacetyl using English yeast. Hmm. Are you going to get some uh, – if you kill it soon? That's a good question. Yeah. That's a James question. <laughs> I'm sorry. You got a mouthful. But oh, you got it. I just, well, so I, well, while he's doing that, I, I, that is a great question. <laughs> I actually wondered the same thing the other day when I remember when I went to yep. uh, so down to 1.006, I was like, man, this thing's still bubbling when I was at one Oh. And I thought if I stop it while it's still bubbling, is that going to have any effects? So I, I should have asked James and now I've asked now somebody <laughs> has. No, I mean, you can kill fermentation with temperature. Absolutely. Um, but I, no. think I, I have a sneaky suspicion that, uh, there's a lot of professional brewers that do that. And then they filter the yeast out. Um, if you're doing a lager or any, any kind of yeast, go to the manufacturer's website. I know you ask about diacetyl with English yeast. 
not super familiar with the look at the strain and the manufacturer they'll tell you whether it's producing any diacetyl typically don't see that in all yeast just lager yeast right so because it's the nature of the yeast right if you were i would think that if you were doing this at you know 70 68 70 degrees mm-hmm. and you took it all the way like i did took it all the way to to 10 mm-hmm. that at that point, you wouldn't have a problem with diacetyl. I wasn't that worried about it. Yeah, no, not, not at room temp. It's typically yeah, not I don't an think issue so either. Yeah. yeah. And we all have some comments too. Matt said there's a chance the bubbling could be the beer off gassing as well. That's possible. Uh, that's, yeah, yeah, it, that's it's possible. possible. It depends on how vigorous it is, you know. Yeah. If it's very, very, very slow, that could be possible. But if it's bubbling like like todd's it was that pretty was constant you know that that's yeast activity so absolutely oh and steve kind of play it by ear steve in the chat thank you he's joining us from wit sundays in australia just got home from work what did i Sweet. miss you missed it all but thank you for being a part i was giving, everything i was giving australia a lot of props in our live stream or way way the three hours ago i was thanking y'all we have a very large audience growing in australia and the uk it's pretty cool to see an international audience todd i think we need to go visit do an international we we do we unfortunately we lose quite a few listeners in australia every time you do your australian accent but <laughs> i don't know, know uh, foster's lager mate and kangaroos <laughs> And uh, I, I I watch a lot of Disney, and the only one I know is Bruce from Nemo. Is a fish or friends, not food. Is that so? Yeah, I'm insulting. Oh. I'm insulting. Oh Australia. yeah, my. Uh, oh, Steve just gave me the middle son finger. Had a, a, my son had a dog named Bruce, and every time I saw him, I went, "Hello, Bruce." Hello, Bruce. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, Steve. Steve just texted me a, a middle finger selfie. Uh, and every oh wow, my phone's flooded with people from Australia. Got to go. No, I'm kidding. Now, Australians have been very sweet to us. They've been very um, – we did a lot of good positive feedback from down under, and we appreciate all you guys in there. I, lo- I love Australia, uh, not just the, the beer culture, uh, the MMA culture. Australia is growing in popularity. in New Zealand, too, but a lot of them train in Australia. Um, there's a lot of good uh, homegrown fighters coming out of Australia. As a fan of combat sports, it's cool to watch. But anyways, oh, Clay, Clay just said, don't insult Vegemite. I've never had it, so I can't insult it. <laughs> it can't be any worse than Nutella. And Nutella's not very good. I so. Oh, I love Nutella. Uh, yeah, my daughter loves it. Oh. But anyway, guys, I, I could digress all day, but with the, I actually do need to edit or get this uh, published and all that. But thank you all so much, Mr. Burns. Thank you so much for joining us. Pop, thank you as well. It's so great to have a three-way brew day. Uh, we're going to 40 gallons of beer is what we're going to be end up yielding. James, don't laugh every time I say three-way. You and Todd are children. There are certain things I can't say. We well, enjoyed the three-way with you today, Josh. That's, Thank this you. Is, this is my company. Oh, look at me. Yeah, absolutely, Mr. Burns. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. I'll see you all next week. And everyone who joined us on the live stream, thank you so much. We we hope that we can do 250 more or, or maybe just two at more. I mean, we'll see where the podcast takes us. But thank you <laughs> so much for y'all's time. I appreciate it. And we will catch y'all next week. Thank oh you. no, don't no, add that. Let me yeah. let me mute let me mute channels. And that will do it for this episode of the Homebrew Happy Hour. If you have a question you would like us to discuss on a future episode, go to homebrewhappyhour.com and click on that submit a question link at the top of the page. Or now you can call or text them in by using 325 325- 305-6107. Thank you to our show sponsor, Imperial Yeast. You'll get a free pack of Imperial Yeast with your monthly recipe kits when you join our Trub Club. Go to homebrewhappyhour.com forward slash club to learn more. On behalf of Todd Burns, James Carlson, and the Pearl Media Network, I'm Joshua Steubing. Thank you for listening. <laughs>